Grace and peace multiply to you and yours and knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of the Most High God, the Savior, the those that keep His commandments. Hope everybody's had a great day today. Now, I want to touch on part two to a very, very brief video that I did the other day that was uh, cut short. It was only like six minutes. So, I'm going to get into it, get right to it, and uh, straight to the point. <clears throat> and this lesson is called... Will Christ return in 2018? Well, look what we have here. You got, today is January the 1st, right? 2018. So, a lot of things going on in the media, a lot of things going on in the world. We see things on the political realm. We see things on a realm as far as the media, social media. We see things going on with the news and in our communities but many people do not realize what's going on in the spiritual realm and with all the things going on it's very easy to be uh, distracted that's why we are watchmen and we have to know prophecy so I'm going to show you a little bit of prophecy today to clear up some things that might be misconstrued okay I last up off with uh, Matthew 24, where Jesus tell his disciples, he, he said, take heed that no man deceive you, right? So, and uh, I mentioned this book that I purchased, it's called The Second Coming of Babylon. Now, I haven't finished reading it, it might, it, it's, it's interesting and it might be a very great read, however, things are misconstrued because of the fact when you start talking about the Bible you talk about prophecy and if you telling something in error you are misleading people so we our job as watchmen we are to clear things up so everybody can get the truth everybody can have be on the same level with the same amount of knowledge so they can know and watch for things to come in the future so, like I said, on page 11, <laughs> first thing they say is the rapture of the church to heaven. Let's go clear that up right quick and then move on. Turn in your Bibles to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. That's before you get to Timothy and, of course, 2 Thessalonians. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, beginning with verse 13. And of course, this is Paul talking. He says, But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. Verse 16, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. Whoa! Ain't that what the Lord's prayer says? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth. I mean, he gonna come down, right? He said, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Now I'm going to show you something before, I'm, before I read on. The precept for verse 16 where it says, the Lord shall descend. The precept, that's why we, that's why we, that's how you study the Bible. It says, for precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. So, just want to point something out to you. The precept for verse 16 is actually in Matthew 24. And I'm going to read it. But let me, let me finish this first. Verse 17. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. So we going to ever be with the Lord floating up in the sky? Or going up to the third heaven with the Father? <laughs> no. <laughs> the 
kingdom is going to be on this earth. Now, that precept for verse 16, it says, The Lord shall descend from heaven with a shout. When is this going to happen? Is this going to be happen before the rapture or after the so-called rapture? Turn in your Bibles to Matthew 24. Matthew 24. And the precept is for actually verse 30. But I'm going to start the scripture before that. Verse 29. Matthew 24. And verse 29. And this is Jesus speaking himself. It says, Immediately after the tribulation of those days. Whoa. He said before or after. He said after. Immediately after the tribulation of those days. What's going to happen? Shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light. And the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. What else going to happen? And then shall appear the sign of the son of man in heaven. Whoa. So that means after the tribulation. Then you're going to see Jesus coming in the clouds. Right? That's scripture. This is what Jesus tell you out of his own mouth when he came in the flesh. After the great tribulation. Verse 30. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of heaven, man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with great with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. Now, ain't that clear? And I'm about to show you something else, too. Uh, hmm. What was the second thing? The seven-year tribulation. On the same page, page 11, the seven-year tribulation. All right. Turn in your Bibles to uh, let's let's see what let's see what Daniel said. The Lord told you to read Daniel. Let's go to Daniel chapter twelve. Daniel chapter twelve, verse one. It says, "And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince, which standeth for the children of thy, thy people." And there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered, everyone that shall be found written in the book. So those that are not found written in the book, what's going to happen to them? They're going to the lake of fire. But it says a time of trouble, such as there never was. To reiterate this, go to Revelation. Back to the New Testament, Revelation 12. Revelation chapter 12, beginning with verse 1. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. You know what this represents? The sun represents Jacob, the moon represents Rachel, and the twelve stars represents the twelve tribes of Israel. And she being with child cried, travailing in birth, and pain to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns, and seven crowns upon his heads. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. Verse 5, And she brought forth a man-child, that's Jesus, who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. Verse 6, and the woman fled into the wilderness. Whoa, where'd she go? She went to the wilderness. Ain't that where Jesus told us to flee? When we see the abomination of desolation standing in the holy place? He said, flee into the mountains. For us, that's the wilderness. Said the woman fled into the wilderness where she hath a place prepared of God, that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days. And how long is that? Three and a half years. That's the time frame of the Great Tribulation. Not seven, like this book says. <laughs> Alright. <clears throat> now, 
So that's 1,260 days. That's three and a half years. I'm going to show you again. Stay in the same chapter. Go or skip down to verse 12. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil has come down unto you having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath he know that he have but a short time. And when the dragon saw that he was cast unto the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man child. And who is the woman? The woman is Israel, which is the church of God, right? Said he persecuted the woman. And and <laughs> Jesus did come out of one of the twelve tribes of Israel, which was the tribe of Judah. Verse 14. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place where she is nourished for a time and times and a half a time. That's three and a half years. Ain't that simple? All right. Same time frame as the Great Tribulation. Okay. Now, go back to Daniel. Go back to the New Old Testament. Daniel chapter 12. We're going to see it one more time. Just, just to prove it. We prove all things just to, just to make sure it wasn't no fluke. Daniel chapter 12 and one verse here. And I heard the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, when he had held up his right hand and his left hand unto heaven, and swear by him that liveth forever, that it shall be for a time, times, and a half. Whoa! That's clear. All over this book is three and a half years, 1,260 days, and a time, times and a half, time, times, and divided the times. And I'm going to go there next, Daniel chapter 7. Go back some chapters, Daniel chapter 7 and more verse here, verse 25. And he shall speak great words against the Most High. And shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws. Whoa, we know who that is. Who doing that right now? The head of the universal church. <laughs> Woo. And they shall be given into his hand until a time, and times, and the dividing of times. That's three and a half years. One more place. So that's 1,260 days, a time, times, and a half, time, times, and a divide of time. Last place, Romans, uh, not Romans, Revelation 13. One verse here. Revelation 13. See, it, 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 the Bible is clear. The, the Word of God is short. It, told, it tells you over and over and over again, not just in the Old Testament, but in the New Testament as well. That's why it behooves me that you got these Bible scholars, these people that went to seminary schools and theology schools, all caked up on philosophy. But they ain't reading book. They not reading prophecy. Because don't the book of Amos say, surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealed his secret unto his servants, the prophets. And I'm not boasting or bragging. That ain't even my style. I'm just saying. God has a protocol. And if you step foot outside of that protocol, how are you going to get the answers? How, are you gonna, how is he going to reveal things to you in the proper order? Now, Revelation 13, one verse here. Verse 5. It says, and there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies, and power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. How long is that? Three and a half years. So it's clear, right? Done. You got 1,260 days, time, times, and a half, time, times, and the dividing of times, forty and two months. The Great Tribulation is not seven years. It's three and a half years. Bottom line. So, showed you all of that to let you know that unless, unless, and, and my son reminded me the other day that uh, you can build a structure 
<laughs> in three months time so unless they build that third temple <laughs> in 2018 and that abomination and desolation go over there and stand in it you still gotta wait for the three and a half years to expire before Jesus return so this 2018 so that means we got another we got some time but that's just the going show and prove that the Lord is merciful and gracious he give us time to get ourselves straight with him but time is running out so this has been a blessing to you grace and peace multiplied to you and yours and knowledge wisdom and understanding of the most high God the Savior to those that keep his commandments the Lord God of Israel the King of Israel Lord of the Sabbath creator of all things I hope somebody got some understanding thank you for your time